Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we are taking a look at Motherboard, which a few months ago I'd have never even given a second glance, but it's reduced in price, it seems to be readily available, and it's actually got some pretty decent specs. So let's take a look at the Gigabyte A520i AC. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the tiny Gigabyte A520i-AC. This is a ITX motherboard, if you haven't realized already, and it's absolutely tiny. This measures in at 17 centimeters by 17 centimeters, which is the, uh, the default ITX size. The reason why I've got this at the moment is generally there is quite a hefty ITX tax on motherboards. And being the ITX boards generally sell a little bit slower through the channel than your normal micro ATX and ATX boards, as those boards have got more expensive due to import and exchange rates, etc. A lot of the ITX boards on the market have seemed to be, well, almost palatable in terms of pricing. Now, I put this one up for just slightly over £90 here in the UK. It's normally somewhere in the region of about 100 120 So the prices have dropped a little bit. There has been some sales on. But when you look at other motherboards for AM4, even the very entry-level boards do seem to be around about £100 at the moment. So potentially now is the time to dip your toes into the board of ITX and possibly do a smaller build, which is what we're going to be doing with this particular board. So in terms of specifications, this is using the AMD A520 chipset, which is a very cut down version of the B550 chipset. It still does cover a lot of the similar bases. One of the things you are going to miss out on this is manual overclocking of your processor. Although having said that, if you're using this in an ITX build, there's a strong chance you're actually going to want to undervolt rather than overclock. Overclocking introduces more heat, etc. And in a smaller enclosure, that is something you want to avoid. So actually undervolting is probably going to be the way to go with this. Due to its diminutive size, there are some other limitations. So we only have two RAM slots, which is not ideal. Although having said that, most Ryzen processors do work best actually just using a dual channel setup with two sticks. The RAM will support up to DDR4 5300 megahertz. I did have to read the uh, documentation twice just to validate that, but yes, apparently this does support up to 5300 megahertz, which is absolutely insane. Whether or not the processor is going to take it, then that is another matter altogether, but the motherboard itself should be okay with it. You can install up to 64 gigabytes, so that is going to be two 32 gigabyte sticks, which might be a little bit pricey, although saying that DDR4 is starting to go out of fashion now, so potentially you could pick up a bargain. When it comes to the actual socket and the processor, this supports the AM4 platform. It does support an awful lot of processors, although do check out the listings in the video description for what CPUs are supported. Things like the 3400G and 3200G are not on the list, unfortunately, but other pr classic processors, such as the 5600G, totally supported. I'm actually going to be running a 5700G on this, so looking forward to building with that. And actually, it's got a relatively decent VRM setup. You've got six direct phases there, all of which are supplied with 55 amp chokes, so giving you somewhere in the region of 330 amps of current. It does actually say on the website this is compatible with the Ryzen 9 5950. Potentially not the best choice to go with this particular motherboard, but certainly it is an option if you want to go down that route. One of the big glaring things that will strike you when you actually pick up one of these boards, especially on this A-Class chipset, is going to be the limitation with PCI Express generations. So this supports a maximum of Gen 3. So in terms of your processor, your M.2 drives, and your graphics cards, if you're going to use one, you are going to be stuck at PCI Express Gen 3. Now, in some instances, that isn't going to be quite such the limitation that it would be on perhaps a more high-end build, but do bear that in mind. So if you're looking for a processor, Sticking with a 4000 series, 3000 series, maybe even a 2000 series should be absolutely fine. Just don't expect to get the very best out of it in terms of bandwidth. And because the M.2 and the graphics card slot are connected directly to the CPU, you are going to get PCI Express Gen 3 times 4 speeds on the M.2 slot and only PCI Express Gen 3 times 16 on the graphics card slot. Now, obviously, depending on the processor, that may potentially be half down to PCI Express Gen 3 times 8. Anyway, that's enough of an intro. Let's go through and take a look at the ports and connectivity on this thing. So we'll start up in the top corner. So we've got an eight pin power delivery. That is a pretty handy thing to have. We've also got tucked away just in that top corner there, there is a CPU header. There are three connections in total for fans. Let's get that out of the way straight away. So you've got one for the CPU. There's a fan one, which I believe is down in this corner. 
and there's also one towards the kind of front side or back side of the board depending on how you're going to set it up which does require an adapter so we'll uh, we'll take a look at that later when we go through the accessories at the end so other things of note obviously aim for socket there in the middle you've got a nice big heat sink so that should help keep things a little bit cooler moving along the top not a great deal else obviously two ram slots as we said before ddr4 supported up to 5300 mega transfers per second next up we've got the 24 pin main power connector and then we've got some of our front io so the one in the front there with the four pins with the black surround is for a bios speaker if you want to connect one of those up you can do the white connector behind is for your front panel io so that's going to be power switch reset switch power on reset all that kind of usual stuff next to that you've got your sata ports so four sata ports in total moving down from that you have got your usb 3.0 header there for front panel connector and just behind that there is a 12 volt rgb connection don't get that confused with other rgb there is moving down there's also another usb 2.0 header and behind that you have got the system fan header and the system fan headers with these are the usual ones from gigabyte so it's the new kind of generation 5 ones so you've got zero fan technology all these rpm ranges for both pwm voltage control or water pump all that sort of stuff um at the bottom obviously pcr express gen 3 times 16 graphics card slot with the retention clips etc m.2 slot as we mentioned before supporting pcr express gen 3 times 4 uh, just in between that in between your ram and your m.2 slot there is a three pin five volt addressable rgb so if you want to hook up addressable rgb you certainly can do with this board even though it is an, a slightly cheaper a-class board you still can connect up your addressable rgb moving across to the other side so there's a little weird connector here now this is for the accessory fan connector so if you want to connect up another set of fans you can do to there the adapter is included it's also cmos reset two pins there and also you've got a tpm port and moving on in that corner there you've got the front panel audio connector which underneath you've got all your audio stuff there this has got the realtek 897 chipset so this is going to support 7.1 audio out of the box although you will have to repurpose your front audio connectors other than that it's just a standard uh, realtek codec there moving up boss chips etc you also got a weird little connector in there that is for the cmos battery which is one of those wired ones rather than being a clip-in because obviously there is limited space here and there is a com port header should you ever want to use one not many people do and i'd imagine even less with an itx rig that is pretty much it for the board itself i think overall it looks pretty nice and uh, it's been done quite tastefully nice coloring no weird brain as you sometimes do get with some of these gigabyte boards moving around to the back so we have got a display port just one display port there and that's going to support display port 1.4 so that's like 5k 60 hertz then you've got a pair of hdmi ports so they are going to support hdmi 2.1 those are going to be up to 4k 60. you can actually run all three of those at the same time which uh, i think is actually pretty cool so it will support up to three monitors simultaneously so potentially for having a tiny pc running like a, a display system going to be absolutely fine there you've also got your usb3 ports there so that's usb 3.1 gen 1 so that's gonna be five gigabit per second those are color coded blue the one that was color coded white is for the usb boss flashback that is also a usb3 port same as the blue ones but they've just color coded it white so you know which one it is there's also the usb bios flashback button there which we've done a video on which you can check out that'll be linked in the video description next up usb 2.0 as you'd expect you've also got a realtek lan so that's gigabit unfortunately would have been nice to have seen 2.5 gigabit i think but yeah one of those things i think saving money gigabit's going to be absolutely fine for most people next up you've got the wi-fi and bluetooth so that's going to support wi-fi ac speeds that's with the intel 3168 chipset which also integrates bluetooth 4.2 so if you want to use bluetooth you can do straight away there is a nice antenna as well that comes with this which we'll show you shortly next up you've got three outputs there so that's going to be headphones green blue is your line in and red is microphone or line in that sort of thing you can change those in the software real tech software you can do the plug and play thing so you plug something in it says what have you plugged in and you tell it what you've done so even if you plug it in the wrong port you can configure it to something else anyway so there you go, that is the board itself on the back uh, sadly no additional m.2 port that would have been a really nice thing to see there kind of is room there they could have done it but limitations of the chipset again and you've got the standard am4 backplate there just really want to show you that just so you can get an idea of the, like the scale of this thing it is absolutely tiny so in a slightly reverse order than what we normally do let's take a look at the accessories you get in the box so obviously because there isn't a captive io shield which 
expected, I guess, at this kind of limited budget end. You do get an IO shield, tells you what everything is there. So yeah, usual kind of deal. You also get a, a pretty cool antenna. So this is for the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, two SMA connectors, plug into the back of the board. Um, there is a magnet in there as well, so you can uh, attach it to the top of your PC case. This is actually quite cool because as a weird twist of fate, I'm actually going to be using this in a white case and it is a kind of white and black antenna. So I think that's going to work out really nicely when we do the build. If you want to see how that goes, obviously stay subscribed and you'll see what that's like later on. You get two SATA cables, one with a right angle connector, one with a straight. You also get your documentation and owner's guide. Actually, something I find very helpful is the fact that actually on the kind of the front page there, it's actually got the exploded diagram of what is on the board and it's actually done in quite good text. Even with my old man eyes, I can see it quite clearly what things are. So actually finding where to plug things in is uh, pretty straightforward. And last of all, we've got the little adapter. So that converts PWM into kind of mini PWM, which will then plug into the motherboard for that front mounted chassis fan header. So yeah, overall pretty decent stuff. I actually really like this board. I wanted to get one a long time ago, but I always found that it, it's just one of those things where it's just a little bit too expensive. But like I said at the very beginning of the video, motherboard prices have gone absolutely mental and it's got to the point where the ITX tax is becoming less and less of a thing. So if you do want to build a slightly smaller PC that isn't going to take up a ton of room and is going to be very compatible and not have to worry about things like overclocking because you kind of can't, although you can obviously turn on XMP for RAM. So you can get the most out of your RAM and potentially if you're under vaulting, you're going to be fine doing that as well. And actually probably will give the system a little bit less of an overhead as well. So again, for those little ITX builds where you can save any heat is uh, always a good thing. I think it's actually a pretty good shape for around about 90 pounds here in the UK. Considering what else on the market at the moment, this actually isn't a bad shout. And again, if you do want to build in a smaller tower, ITX mini boxes, that sort of thing, there aren't a huge amount of options, especially under a hundred pounds. So definitely worth checking it out. But what I think isn't important, what you think is, so let us know your comments in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.